Man, does that sound really good. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to this very special Z9 introduction program on Z9 launch day. My name is Mike Corrado. I work in Nikon Pro Services, and I've been wor working with Nikon for over 38 years. And we are here to talk to you about the Z9 camera that we have just introduced. We have put together a series of shoots with very talented photographers and filmmakers, and over the next two hours, we're gonna go delve into these shoots, the creative, the performance of the camera, some of the features of the camera, and we're gonna have just a really great conversation over the next two hours. So the first hour, we're gonna dedicate to Still, and we've got some amazing photographers here with us uh, for this hour. Let me start by introducing Mr. Joe McNally, commercial journalist, uh, photographer. Joe, welcome to the program. Thank you for having me. Thank you, and it, we had a great shoot recently, and uh, we're going to talk about that uh, and see the end result from that. I think we used the word fun a lot. Fun. Fun was great, <laughs> right. Hey, listen, I, I went from Colorado, 14,000 feet, to the flat desert, uh, an open desert with you, so it was a great transition. Um, an incredible sports photographer who I've been inspired by for many, many years, uh, Jen Potheiser, welcome to the program. Thanks for having me. You are, you are way too kind, Mike. No. Thanks. Listen, Thanks for I've having been, me. I've been following your photography for many, many years, and I think the word versatility comes to mind, and, uh, and I, I can't wait to talk to you about your experiences with Z9. Now, the person to my left, look at that smile. The most <laughs> handsome man, awarded the most handsome man in the world uh, I like by that title. me. Um, <laughs> well, Mr. Deserved. well deserved. <laughs> Mr. Matthew Jordan Smith, welcome to the program, Matthew. <laughs> good to be here, man. It's good How to are have you doing? from Tokyo. Um, we have worked together for decades now, right? And, yes. Uh, I've known most of you for quite a while, and this is going to be a great conversation. Uh, Matthew, you took the camera to task first, and we're going to talk about your shoot as we go. Love that. Uh, you're a commercial portrait photographer, correct? Is that correct. how you would define yourself? Yeah. And we're going to see how you put the Z9 to the test. But before we move forward, uh, none of this makes sense unless you have somebody here to talk technical and explain some of the depth of the features. Now, when I fire off the camera, the Z9 is far more than just the frame rate and speeds. And we're going to talk to Mark Cruz, who is uh, one of the most technical people at Nikon, who delves into the manuals, learns the camera as they grow. As, as we learn more features, he delves into that and he can explain it all to us. Mark Cruz, welcome to the program. Thank you. Right. Excited. I can't wait for everybody to see your stuff, but before we get there, uh, Mark, I want to turn to you first. And really, uh, for those of you tuning in, you've seen a lot of content so far. We want to talk to them about what's so special about the Z9. What makes this camera a flagship Nikon mirrorless camera? Well, I think the word you said right there, flagship, is what makes it special. Uh, for the last couple of years since we've come out with the Z platform, everybody's been wondering when are we going to come out with a flagship for the mirrorless. And when we thought about that uh, prospect of coming out with a flagship, we really have to take into consideration where we are now, and that was with the D6 being the flagship. There's a lot of expectation for professional photographers that require those type of fast speeds, you know, a very reliable autofocus that something in the Z format can deliver. We know it can deliver in terms of the optics um, and the image quality. I think what people have been waiting for is really the autofocus system to surpass what the D6 does or even just get up to D6 levels. And we've done that. We've done that with this camera so we can confidently say that this is now not only the flagship of the mirrorless platform, but actually the flagship of the entire Nikon portfolio of cameras, including the D6. It surpasses that camera in so many respects. When we thought about the design of the camera, you know, it was important to make it familiar and make it appropriate for that professional photographer. So, um, you know, we looked at the overall body design and found that it was important to include the integrated vertical grip. So to make it familiar to those photographers that d need that robust to it. So we've taken all the cue points from DSLR know-how over the years, what we've learned over mirror mirrorless technology in the last two years, and combined it into one camera that suits not only the sports and photojournalist, uh, which we normally target, but is also looking at wedding and commercial and portrait photographers because unlike previous flagships, this has a very high resolution. Um, and what we'll talk about later with another panel, it has top grade video specs. So if you ask me what makes it so special, it's the combination of all those things which is unusual for us for a flagship camera. Usually it's targeting one segment, um, but now we are actually targeting several different segments all in the best camera that we've ever launched. Mm -hmm. There's something very unique about this camera that's unique to the industry. It is now a full ground up electronic camera meaning there is no shutter mechanism in this camera. Talk to everybody about the importance of that and how is that possible? Yeah, it's gonna be shocking. I know when I was told the first time that this was not gonna have a mechanical shutter, 
that uh, it was uh, my eyes uh, I, I went bug-eyed when the engineer told me. And, uh, but it didn't take me very long to understand why we don't have it. And the reason why is because it was really attributed to the stack sensor. That's really the technological hurdle that we've now overcome. It has to do with something called scan, uh, scan speed from top to bottom of the sensor. So we have a very good uh, speed going right uh, from left to right and scanning the sensor, but from top to bottom it's typically very slow. Uh, until now, with the stacked uh, CMOS sensor, we've overcome that. You know, all that technical jargon aside, we now have sh electronic shutter speeds that uh, mimic that of a mechanical shutter. So any distortion or um, banding that you would normally get with electronic shutters has been minimized so much so that we frankly don't need a mechanical Virtually shutter. Virtually not there, right? Yes. You have so, to really press it hard to find it. Yeah, and uh, it opens up many more advantages. We can be operate completely silently. We don't have um, uh, mechanical uh, variations in terms of the timing and the consistency. And then we also have things like going up to very fast shutter speeds like one thirty-two thousandth of a second, which a mechanical shutter simply could not do. Many advantages and one last advantage is I will say is that for people coming over from mechanical shutters there's no more blackout in the viewfinder or the live view screen. This is something new with, that we call real live view technology and um, it's going to allow you to see the picture that you take and not have the blackout so you'll actually see it in real time. This is really how we've been able to surpass what the D6 and any of our cameras have done in the past is the secret is really that stack CMOS sensor. Uh, the camera's got Xpeed 7. Xpeed 7 basically touches all avenues of the camera, every area that you've just spoken about. Talk about that, how that plays into the frame rates of the camera. Yeah, so that opens up uh, a lot of doors because, you know, when we're use utilizing these fast CF Express Type B cards, we can now maximize them. And we've only hit about 14 frames per second at our top cameras up until now. Now we've unlocked 20 frames per second in RAW. And we can shoot that for you know, not five seconds, not seven or eight seconds. We can shoot that for 50 seconds, and I've even pushed it past that. So, you know, you can shoot a thousand frames if you want. Uh, maybe it's not entirely practical, but the point is you'll never outrun the buffer. Um, we've also allowed this camera to unlock 30 frames per second, and that's not 30 frames per second at, you know, 20 megapixels. That's 30 frames per second at 45.7 megapixels, which is unusual for this type of flagship camera because typically we we prioritize speed high ISO we've come to a point now with the sensors and the XP technology where we can get the speed we can get the resolution with new compression technologies with our with our raw format um, and then lastly we have a hundred and twenty frame per second I'm not talking about video I'm actually talking about stills we have a stills mode for 11 megapixels which I think we were mentioning you know that's higher resolution from DSLRs back in the day, and uh, we can do that 120 frames per second, full auto focus, full auto exposure during that time, and basically catch invisible moments, something we've never been able to do in any of our cameras. So we're really, that's a big wow factor for this camera. I got to turn to you guys and say, Mark's talked about a lot of stuff, and you guys now had a chance to experience the camera. Joe, let me start with you. What does all of that mean to you as a photographer? Well, here's the thing, as a photographer, out here in the world, you know, you're used to a lot of ongoing technology, new cameras all the time. And it's wonderful, it's nice, you look at some of the new technology and say, okay, well, that would be cool to have, I see that improvement, okay, but they're incremental changes. This camera's a game changer. This camera is a leap, you know, it's not um, just a, a, you know, a minute by minute sort of improvement. This just puts us into the future. You know, Joe, you and I have spoken too, to Mark's point about not only having the commercial quality at a high megapixel count, 45.7, but then to have the speeds to do the journalistic work you do that requires speeds and Jen for you in sports and Matthew for you even in the studio. Um, talk about that because you even said that this may be your one only camera body you need to take out now. Oh, it, it already is. I mean, I can't wait for... Well, you can't have, have, you know, you, you can, can get I one soon. One? But you, can I have yeah. that one? Come on. <laughs> you know? Um, no, I, I'm a jack-of-all-trades kind of uh, assignment photographer. I've done news and sports and, and fashion and beauty and, and celebrity and the, 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 the path of a general assignment photographer. And I've rarely had a camera in the digital realm that addresses all those needs. 
You know, I've uh, always felt a little schizophrenic on assignments. I have this camera if for heavy duty action, I have this camera for studio, et cetera. This camera is for everything. Yeah, and a lot of different types of people. Jen, the speeds, speeds and speeds. Frame rates, how important to the moments in the sports photography you create? I, I think uh, jumping off of what Mark said and what, and what you said, Joe, and, and encompassing the speed, there's a lot of wow factor here. Um, it is the, the feel of the D6, but so much, so much more. It is, in fact, a game changer. The, the speed, uh, one of the shoots that I did, uh, I was shooting stills, and when we went back and looked at the take, the subjects thought that I had switched to video. It is just that fast and that sharp. Um, it is a lot of fun. You know, the word of the day has been unstoppable. Um, that's what we're coming out with with this camera. I think unstoppable confidence, feeling great. We talk about this, being able to have fun on shoots again. To me, I found this with every iteration and change of cameras that the more technology comes, the more fun it becomes for us because we can really concentrate on the subjects. Now, speed is important to you, Matthew, even though you're in the studio. And we're going to talk about all your individual assignments. But, Matthew, talk about how important it is to have something like IAF. And we're going to dig deep into the autofocus system next. But how, how important is that for you? And what was your first impression? I mean, it's everything for me. You think about being in the studio and taking portraits and maybe you think about being like one frame at a time, but for portraiture also, there are things that happen in the moment and you want to capture it. And this camera speaks to that. I mean, it screams to that. I can get all those moments in the moment, and I love that. We also talk uh, often about using a 1.2 lens yes. and a 1.4 lens, and in the studio at times, it's just not really sticking with the eye or yeah, with the subject. Yeah, it's been a, it's been we'll a, talk a pain more in the past, but now, In depth about oh. your particular shots, but how important is that to you as a studio photographer I mean, it changes with the subject of move, movement? For me, it changes everything. To, to be able to shoot at you know, a, a wide open aperture if I want that and, and capture the moment with, with confidence mm -hmm. in every frame, that makes you feel like, oh, it's fun again. Actually fun in a new way. Yeah. Well, everyone here on the panel has a passion for photography, every one of us. Mark is not just technical, he's a great artist as well. And I, like Mark, get the camera months before you guys because we start to evaluate and we start to see where the system goes and we start thinking about the stress tests on this camera that we can take this camera into environments. For me, and I've got a few shots here that we're going to roll through, uh, but the autofocus is what caught me right away. I picked the most erratic bird on the beach, a common turn. I actually have footage from the video, if you guys want to show that, uh, where you see the focus points immediately out of the gate, following the birds, it transitions to another bird so quickly and follows that other bird with different patterns, whether it grabs the whole wings, the bodies, or the eyes of the bird. The eye detect for birds here is phenomenal. And I found like such a great experience to me. And at that point, what happens is the level of confidence goes up. The take goes up. I got 99% of those images tacked sharp. Jen, you had mentioned that earlier in conversations with me about that just every picture seems sharp. And, and again, you, you wish for perfection, but um, you know, I, I was able to create my own story in a series of birds. But Mark, let's delve into the AF a bit. What makes this AF so special? outside of its speed and its accuracy and picking up everything. Yeah, well, that's uh, that's one half of it. It's the speed and accuracy of tracking something going away or coming to you. What makes it more remarkable is the subject detection. So when we talk about subject detection, typically in the past we've had face and eye detection as well as um, dogs and cats. Now we actually have nine different subjects that this can detect, which includes birds now, uh, great for the birding community. It can even narrow it down to the bird's eye. But we have an assortment of different vehicles, uh, planes, trains, cars, bikes, motorbikes, that it can detect. And what that means is that um, rather than selecting a box, uh, that box can expand and change shape to your subject if it can detect it. So that gives you a level of accuracy and a freedom to allow the autofocus system to detect that subject and allow you to worry about more composition um, and not so much keeping track of the focus, which kind of takes your concentration away from what you're doing. And that's kind of uh, powered by something called a deep learning technology, which is in the uh, development process of the autofocusing system. That's really what allows this to come to life, this deep learning coupled with 
the stack CMOS sensor and the XP technology, all those combined to give us this reliable autofocus, which, as I said before, actually surpasses the, reli the reliability of the D6. So that's the special thing for this subject detection and, and the speed of tracking, as you just saw with your bird example. Yeah, absolutely, and I think the one Grand Slam home run to me was bringing 3D tracking back into our flagship Z9. Talk about 3D tracking, how important that is. I think everybody that knows the Nikon format is going to be really excited about that. That's something that we tried to mimic with subject tracking in the first iterations of uh, Z6 and Z7, but it wasn't until this camera right now where we actually have 3D tracking. A lot of people are going to uh, love that and know about that, especially sports photographers that use that feature. It's basically a box that will lock on historically in the past to color and tracks it around the frame. In a D6 or a D5, it would be relegated to the center. Now we can go pretty much all the way to the edges of the frame. And what's new with this is it's not just a box that's tracking your subject. It is coupled. We've layered on top of that subject detection. So whereas 3D tracking in a DSLR would only be a box, now you can have that detect animals, vehicles, people, eyes, um, even the smallest eyes that we've ever had being able to be detected in a camera can be layered on top of 3D tracking. So as long as it's within the radius of that square, it'll actually change shape of that box and put priority to the eye, which you know portrait photographers, even if you're in the studio, uh, might even prefer because you can have the flexibility of locking on that box and then having it divert to an eye once it detects the subject. Well, I consider myself the ultimate bird nerd uh, next to one of my former colleagues, Lindsay Silverman, who is the bird man of Long Island right now. And the one thing, and I, I shot a series of pictures that we have uh, to share, the bird's individual, I leave all the automation on, I let the camera find the bird, finds the bird's eyes, finds the bird's body, and the tracking is just amazing. I also found too though, within group shots where there are multiple birds, I have the freedom to turn it all off. And that's the beauty, because remember, we can go down to the very basics of single point focus uh, if we want to. So there are a whole bunch of other focus modes we can't get into right now, but you as a photographer have the freedom to do what you want. You guys feel that way? Jen, talk to me about the autofocus experience. It, it is total freedom and uh Fun seems to be another word of the day. It's the freedom to have fun. Um, when you know that your, your camera is helping you along to get that autofocus with the eye detection, the confidence that every frame of that 120 frames per second are gonna be tack sharp, it just allows you to shoot in a different way. It allows you to think in a different way. And Joe, you and I are in the desert with one of your subjects, which is a dancer, uh, a theatrical person from uh, Las Vegas. Talk about your first experiences when you went from the commercial side of your shoot to this dancer and how you dealt with autofocus. What did you do and what was your experience? Well, the, I wanted, you know, somebody athletic, somebody who could really move out in the desert. I wanted to challenge the camera, you know. And so we did a lot of stuff with him where he's, he's very fluid and beautiful to watch, but he's coming right at the camera. So the, the, the plane of focus is changing every second, you know, or fewer than a second, you know. And the camera, I picked him up. Okay, fine. It picks him up and it's tracking him, but I introduced the extra detail of having him unexpectedly jump during the middle of his run. And I really wanted to see what would happen. In past autofocus situations, if you were on a group or something, his lead leg comes up, it might grab that leg but the camera was relentless. That could be another word of the day. You know, the camera was relentless. We got unstoppable, we got fun, we got relentless. Let's yep. keep going, we'll just okay. pile and them up. The box that you're talking about here, this AF box that narrows down to the eye, occasionally uh, spreads out to the face, just had him in absolute fashion. At the end of the day, I don't think I had a single unsharp frame. And we did like 10, 12 runs. He's coming across the desert and he's super small. The camera picks him up, he jumps and <laughs> using, and then, you know, I could, <laughs> and then he was, no, <laughs> you know, um, but the thing is, at the end of the day, you have a hundred percent usable take. And that's hugely important because we face it as photographers right now, we're in an era of tight budgets, fast turnaround, clients demand sophisticated results and they demand them quick. There's none of this like, oh, I can go back, I can do a reshoot, or extend your time frame out there in the desert for more days. There's no opportunity to do that. So an efficient camera like this is huge, 
because your take is 100% usable. And we were we shot in a lot of backlit situations. I did with the birds, but you did with your dancer. You know, up against sunset. What I found, the box still found the eye in the shade, still found the person when the head spun around because Mark, right, it, it, it boxes out the head, it boxes out the torso. It knows to look for these different distinguishable things, correct? That's correct, yeah. If, it, if the a person is too small in the frame to detect that eye, it will revert to the face, the head, and even the torso. So that's uh, one of the cool things that we developed in the deep learning uh, engineering. Mm -hmm. The amazing wow. thing to me, too, is when the dancer was going profile in low light. Right. It still found him. It couldn't see the full eye, but it still found Even this profile, piece. Even profile, the edge of the eye. Exactly, exactly. So I was, I was just thrilled. I, you know, when he was doing the side jumps, he had to recollect himself. It wasn't a continuous motion. So I was able to punch into my LCD, and I was like, you know. It's, I, it's I was, addictive, I, isn't it? I, I was stunned. It's like, I want to do another one because I want to see that the camera just did what I thought it did, and it yeah. does. So now I have double of what I wanted before. And, and, and as photographers, we're always trying to see what we can get away with and, and push the boundaries. And I think that's what is so exciting about this because you just think about things differently that, oh, well, I never thought I could do this before. Let's now try it because everything works. So it should just keep working. And it, and it did. You hit it on the head, like it opens the door for you to like do other things. And, and you get this freedom now where before you like trying to focus on if you're getting it in focus, and now you're free to be free to compose it and have more fun and get in the moment. It's a great thing. Yeah, and, and your subjects can have that same freedom and fun because you're not asking them to stand on a little piece of gaffer tape or, right. or stay in this zone and, and you don't have to look at your camera to see if it's in focus. It's, they can be in their zone and, and we can be in our zone and, and you just make pretty pictures. Yeah. And I agree with what you said before, Joe, time is money. And to know you've got it, you move on. You know, exactly. when you're partitioning your day. Exactly. You have to be really efficient in the field nowadays as a photographer. And this camera is going to be a huge partner in that. Majorly. So, Matthew. Yes. You were one of the first people on the block to get to test drive, stress test the Z9. We spoke about it. You came up with some concepts and ideas. We're going to look at a few of your pictures now. Beautiful. I really want to delve into the details of your creative where your mind goes with this. We give you some of the specs, like the resolution, uh, which to me is even more enhanced with DX crop because as a bird photographer with 45.7 megapixels, to be able to go to DX crop and have a close to 6,000 pixel file wow. at 300 DPI is a pretty nice thing. It extends your abilities. But now we're in the studio with you. I want you to go back on how important autofocus is for you, but the camera's not just about autofocus. Talk about the quality, talk about the color, talk about everything that comes out of the shoot you've done. So set up the shoot and let's look at some of your pictures. All right, cool. In studio, I want everything. I want clarity, I want color, I want resolution, I want a sharp picture at a wide open aperture. And this camera can give me that. You know, so for my shoot, I want to have fun. I want to go in there with uh, people who can move a lot. Uh, I think, you know, staying still in the studio was like 1950. I want to move because life moves fast. I need a camera that can move with me as well. So I found some great performers. I found a, a freestyle footballer. I found a salsa dancer. And I found a samurai. Sounds interesting. It, it was. Well, I've seen the pictures, so I know way. it's interesting. But <laughs> Ordinarily, you shoot a samurai with long lens, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> but no, this girl's fantastic. She was just incredible in every single way. Uh, so, you want to first, first image? Yeah, let's jump to the first image. Guys, can we pull up the first image? This is the baller, right? This not is the exactly what I expected. Baller. I thought soccer or something like that, but it's not really soccer. It's no, a combination no. of art, move, the ball motion, talk about this. Yeah, it's like talk a, a little bit about the autofocus as you're you're seeing it happen. What was your So this guy, feeling? he's this is freestyle football, which is it's not like a football that we know in the States. It's like a different ball. And he's like basically doing like uh, you know, was it like uh, just just dancing with the ball or like doing uh, you know, rapping with a ball. It's just him free, keeping this ball going, and he's I'm shooting him. Uh, he's jumping up and down, like Joe was saying before about the guy jumping. He's jumping, he's on the ground, and no matter where he went, it focused on his eye. I'm shooting with a 50 millimeter lens, I'm wide open, 
and it kept up. 50 millimeter 1.2. Yes. And that goes back to our point about having a very narrow depth of field to work in, so critical sharpness on the eyes becomes ridiculously yes. important to you. Super, super cool. But even in the sense of this baller, of just even just the model turning around fast right. on a set for right. you has got to be important as it well. It is. Like his eyes are on the ball the entire time, so his face is to the side a lot. No problem. His eyes are in focus the entire time. Talk a little bit about this salsa dancer. I love this picture. I love the energy of the picture and the movement. You always capture that as Joe continually talks to us about the moment it clicks, the moments. So you're in the studio and you have music. So you have this sound going on and we're all feeling it. And you can't fake that stuff, you know. So here she is. She's in the vibe of the music. She's moving. And I can capture that whole process where I focus on just her eye. And then the rest kind of falls away. So like that feeling. I love this stuff. This when is a fun you're, day. When you're looking at these images on the computer for the first time, you're zooming into 100, 100, 200%. What you're feeling in the quality of the file and the color, was well, it what you expected? Beyond what I expected. In the past, I'm used to shooting and looking for the ones that are in focus because sometimes you don't get them all in focus, uh, especially at 1.2. Not with this camera. I mean, every frame is in focus. I'm like, oh, wow. So now I have confidence to just go and look for the great frame and not worry about, okay, is that one, so I love that shot, is it in focus? That goes away. And, and also too, I mean, it's so beautiful because she's in the moment yeah. and you can let her stay in the moment. Yes. You don't have to constrain her, you know, you're just rolling yeah. and, it's, and it shows in the picture. It shows, in the, it absolutely no, in shows. The past, I'm like, okay, do that again. You don't have to worry about that again. That, that whole thing, oh, do it again, is gone. Talk about the samurai. Let's throw up the samurai oh, photos now. I, now. I, I feel like so your good. passion and emotion, every time we bring this up, that beautiful smile that I love so much gets bigger and bigger. Uh, I love these images and the movement here. Talk about now, the samurai. Now, I have always wanted to do this. And to be honest, in the past I've tried, and you know, it's impossible to really get them in focus and shoot wide open all the time. Because as a, as a samurai sword fighter, it's moving fast. And I have her in a, a kimono and she has her sword and she's fighting, you know, and she's moving fast. I gotta be careful with number one because I'm going kind of close to her. But yeah, that knife is sharp. Yeah, well, this is actually a, one that's not sharp, thank God. All right, but go with me on this. The knife is razor sharp. <laughs> super sharp, super sharp. <laughs> danger, but man, it's dangerous. As, as you can dangerous see. situation, great camera to capture the danger. In Roll the moment, with me here, Matthew. In the moment. I mean, you see her kimono is flying as she's moving and she's throwing her, her, uh, her blade around. It was easy for me to get these images in sharp focus, you know, and shoot at wide, wide open at 1.2. I love the color you've created, especially in this frame. It's so beautiful. Oh. I mean, you had to have had this in your mind of all these elements coming together, the flow of the fabric, her intense look, a little less of the dangerous sword in there somewhere. But Yeah, now she brought this extra. This is, these are fans or in Japan, uh, a sensu, and she's taking the fan and she's moving and all this fabric is flowing in front of her face. But still, at 1.2, as the fan comes around, her eye pops out, bam. Mm -hmm. It's beautiful. I mean, all of these frames are sharp. If you guys want me to show 100 pictures, I could have, mm -hmm. because they're all sharp and you're seeing the movement. Look at her, look at her kimono here as she, you know, finishes the, the process of swinging her sword and you see that, that curve of her kimono that's a heavy kimono, so she's got to really swing it fast to get that thing to move, and she does here. I love this shoot, and you I can't wait to shoot it again. Well, yeah, you, <laughs> hopefully you will get a few and, and bring them <laughs> on. We Matthew, want to see what you create. Distract him. I'll grab it. <laughs> <laughs> I, have, I have this all censored, so I know exactly where it goes, when it goes. Uh, actually, that mark, the Kensington lock. Oh, right. Um, Another good point. You can actually secure the camera remotely so I can lock it away from you guys. Um, but just your overall impression after you had this shoot, just so oh, up for Oh, man. Us. I was in love with this camera. I mean, it brings fun back into photography. And you have this freedom. You have this confidence going into any situation and get you a shot. It opens the door for you to stop thinking about stuff and worrying, do you have the shot in focus that you love? They're all going to be sharp and in focus. Now you can be more creative, and that's cool. Get more out of a shoot. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Speaking of fun. <laughs> we had lots of fun. Unstoppable. Yep. And the person who has coined the fun in all of this. Um, Jen, you had a series of shoots that you put together yep. that meet your world. 
and stress test the camera. What happened? Tell us about the shoots. We're going to run some of your pictures as well. Yeah, so uh, it was a, a summer of tennis. It was right around a U.S. Open tennis tournament, and uh, we had, had been shooting there on hard courts and said, let's, uh, let's see what this camera can do on red clay. Um, we, we wanted something durable, and we, we wanted to feel that energy and that movement. Uh, so we, we found some red clay courts and, and brought the camera there. And, uh, you know, this is a, a, one of our athletes coming in for a short drop shot. And he started at the baseline. And, you know, Joe, you said this before with your dancer. He is running towards me, running towards me. And every single frame, tack sharp. And because there is no blackout in the sensor, you're seeing it. And as you're, as you're shooting, you're just like my mind is saying like, wow, it's really doing this. And, and it did it. Um, it, it really allows you to think differently. So you know that you have this shot and then you say, okay, well, we have the movement coming towards us. Let's see what the lateral movement can do. This at a 120 frames a second. I, I mean, you, you feel every, every grain of, of uh, clay coming up and, and you feel that, that energy. Um, you see the dust flying off the ball and, and then you know you have that and then you get a little greedy and you say, well, well what else can I do? So uh, I, I lie down on my back and I, I shoot with the 105 and the, the racket swings across his body and the camera stays tack sharp on his eye. That's not something I would have ever even dreamed of doing. Um, and it's fun to make pictures like that that you didn't think that you could ever do because previously it would have been, okay, stand there, I'm going to get my focus, now swing and don't move. And there's no way that that energy feels the same as this energy. This is, you know, he is in the zone just like I'm in the zone. And that's a, that's a fun partnership. Two things coming together. That's amazing. Yeah, no, it's three. It's, it's uh, me as the photographer, the camera, and the subject, and everyone does what they're supposed to do. Mm -hmm. um, so we, we did tennis, and then, uh, then we went and did some boxing, super, super low light, and uh, you can barely see the, the athlete's eye, and somehow the camera can see it, and it's staying. Magic. Yeah, yeah magic. Everything it is. that Mark explained before. <laughs> Mark, Mark the magician, that's, that's what we're coining as our, that's as our good. phrase. That's good. Um, <laughs> so uh, it, it just locked on her eyes, and, and you know, there's 30 frames a second at this uh, in, incredible uh, movement, and then there is the beauty in knowing that I can use the same camera and uh, get an action shot again he's weaving and bobbing here um, stays locked on his eyes the the heavy bag comes in front of him it it stays rock solid sharp it's amazing and then I know that I can just go to a portrait without without switching bodies without thinking I'm not gonna have the resolution it is seamless and when you're tight on budgets when you're tight on time all of those things add up and it's, it's all in this amazing little package that, that just fits right in your hand like a D6 does. Yeah, it's, it, that versatility is so key, whether it's for professionals or people serious into photography. I think anybody that loves D850, loves D5 or D6 are going to meld perfectly into this camera. At least that's the way I felt because I shot a bit of tennis too. What I loved is going super low to the ground, focusing through the nets, and it still picked up the face. So 100%. obstructions have always been something the technology, Mark Cruz, we've always had something called focus tracking with lock-on, right? Now you add IAF and the ability for the camera to recognize the scene. Uh, that's pretty amazing, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, it adds a different dimension of reliability, as everyone has said, so that's pretty exciting. Very, very cool. And, and just going back to the tennis, knowing that you can be silent, I mean, that is, that is priceless in any, in really in any situation, whether it is uh, documentary, sports, portraits, 
um, that again is just another level of confidence that you have. And that's that's part of the beauty of the technology and all of this because as much as I love the D6, to be able to have the features and benefits of speeds, of framing rates, to have the focus capabilities, as Mark mentioned, off the sensor, to be able to do different things and photographing birds and the birds are flying off in a pair up in the upper left corner but 90% coverage on the horizontal and vertical of this camera, Mark, gives us so much coverage, at coverage and I'm, I'm, I'm literally seeing them and I'm picking it up and I'm creating a frame with a ton of negative space but I'm doing it intentionally and the camera's still focusing exactly where I want it to be. We go back to that word confidence because now I can create and I know you guys have done that really well. Now, Joe, I, I, I went through 35 days of travel on the road from Cape Cod through Colorado, um, back to New York, into Seattle, uh, back up in the mountains at 14,000 feet in Colorado with Christy Odom, and then I come back to sea level with you in the desert, right? So Christy abuses my body at 14,000 feet, you abuse my body in the desert, back to back. It's our mission, <laughs> Mike, it's, it's part of our mission. You talk to me all the time about being a generalist in photography and photojournalist, but sports action great meets commercial quality you put together a shoot of your own we're going to see some of those pictures let's talk about your shoot experiences and uh, how this all came together and what about the camera fit for your shoot sure i mean i, I think i said earlier the camera covers the waterfront so i created really a two-pronged assignment where i have the athlete moving beautiful you know fashion motion and then we have this supersonic race car that looks like a missile on wheels. Just at 300 and, miles an hour, right? Yeah, it's it's up there. I mean, we had a, you know, Ed was like, hey, how fast do you want to go? Let's, let's keep 120. Ed, Ed, the, Ed the driver, you right? Know, and he actually said, when I get to 120 miles an hour, he goes, I'm just going into second gear. I'm like, <laughs> Ed, it's enough. It's a testimonial for speed. <laughs> you know, it's enough. So, and we mounted car uh, cameras on the car. So that was not so much a test of the AF because the car and the camera are moving together. The athlete tested out the AF. What I really wanted out of the car was just something unusual and to explore the file. We uh, shot a lot in the late part of the day, the richness of the file, the detail, and also the build factor. Uh, no kidding, <laughs> Mr. Durability, Mark Cruz, you'd love this, the first run cameras naked, remote mounted, and this guy screams across 120 miles an hour. We get to the cameras, blasted with the dirt. I mean, you, you can write your name on the back. Yeah. But that's a confidence thing for you, isn't it? Absolutely, I mean, as professional photographers across the board, I mean, you shoot sports, Jen. I mean, you're out there in the rain. It doesn't matter what the you're conditions are. You're out there right, right there with me in the rain and the mud. And <laughs> so this camera is not only rock solid, it's got all the tech you could possibly imagine. What was the last thing you said before the race car took off the very first time? Oh, I'm glad these aren't my cameras. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thank you very much. Whose lens was on Thank you, Nikon. My 2470, thank, you. And, thank and you very much. at the much. same time, I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> oh, you were yeah. not sorry. No, I wasn't. You wanted wasn't to push it again, <laughs> again and again. And what I love, Joe, is I love the problem solving. Let's, let's talk about the dancer first, the athlete, Will. What a great figure, certainly is, is a very sculpted body. Talk about this, let's so, so show some of these pictures and then we'll go back to the race car. But sure. talk about Will and what you wanted out of that and how did the camera work with you on that? Well, he's, he's a, you know, a triple threat, right? He's a dancer, he's a performer, he's an athlete. And so I wanted him to just be himself in the desert. He's got a great sense of motion and, you know, as you say, sculpted body, completely fit and can handle all sorts of physical challenges. And here's, I'm referring again, um, as I said earlier, his lead leg, lots of the older iterations of autofocus would have focused on that leg. Here, the um, autofocus target, the box, is right up at his eyes. And the movement was unpredictable. I didn't, I wasn't out there saying jump. He jumped whenever he wanted to. And then, so I'm shooting a 100 to 400 at 400, so I'm, I'm adjusting my frame with him you know, up and down, and never once did the box waver. Mm -hmm. And I noticed too, a lot of times you're shooting low angle. How could we bypass any of this, Mr. Cruz? Can you talk a little bit about the very angle LCD and how it works? Yeah, I mean, the shot that you just saw, saw right there, it's a good segue to the fact that when we developed this body, we paid a lot of attention to people that are shooting in portrait orientation. So we thought it was very appropriate to build in a vertical grip, not just for the overall feel, but having the separate trigger right there. And addressing the needs for people to shoot in that way and get at different angles, we've also introduced a new screen that 
is new for a flagship. We've never really had, you know, D1, D up to D6 had an articulating screen in any respect. Um, now we not only have it tilt uh, up and down in the horizontal direction, but now there's a new feature where we can do it vertically as well. So this will give you freedom if you don't want to look through the electronic viewfinder to frame things from a lower angle or a higher angle if you want um, using the screen. So this is something that we're really happy about and as well um, the lack of blackout that we have with this system now whether it's the viewfinder or the screen because of a new processor and a new dual stream technology that we have in there but um, it's it's peculiar for people that are used to the mechanical shutter because you can see you know I can imagine Joe seeing that entire sequence leading up to him and being able to anticipate well actually you don't have to anticipate you just have to react to when the jump comes in, in previous cameras you know the very fast frame rates would be a little bit staggered. It would just be slightly in the past, which makes it hard to do. Here you're reacting in real time as if you're looking through glass and prisms and optics, but you're really looking through a very high resolution, very bright electronic viewfinder and seeing it in real time, rivaling the speed of light in optics. So that's a real breakthrough for us. Yeah, it's pretty amazing. And uh, to, to watch you utilize all of these tools and the LCD, especially when you got low to the ground, was amazing. What I loved about being on shoot with you is uh, I was back off with an 800 millimeter 5.6 and the Z9, and you were with the 100 to 400, right? So we were looking at different perspectives, only you were going full res, 20 frames per second raw. I was going at 120 frames per second at 11 megapixels. Now, 11 megapixels is no slouch. That is a printable file. And in this day of the internet, not only does it offer you more moments, we talked about the moments in between, a diver, the tips of the fingers to the water, the tennis ball coming off the racket, that spray of, of, of dirt that, that happens on the impact. But I, after a while, I'm saying, can you, Joe, can you stop? Because now I have 6,000 pictures in 30 seconds and I'm gonna have to edit all this stuff. But what was beautiful about that is when you did do sequences with Big Strobe, when I was doing 120 frames a second, Will goes up into the leap, bup, 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 looks like a little movie, like you said before, are you shooting a movie? And as, if we stitch all these together, the moment Joe decided to shoot the picture, the flash goes off in those flash pictures, and now I know where Joe's genius is. Now if I can figure out in between the 120 frames a second <laughs> which one that was and, and how to do that, that would be great. But um, we did several runs and it just seemed to me, I mean, tell me if you got this in your camera, it just didn't miss. It didn't miss. And and I hate to make it sound so easy, but it didn't. Yeah, that's the thing. I mean, what Mark just said is very, it's the first time, Matthew, Jen, you, you know, like we've never had a moment with a subject where there was no blackout, right? I mean, my whole, my whole career has always been like this in-between moment that you feel like you might miss it. It's important in the studio, human emotion, it's important in sports, and so and that, you never lose track of it. You're, you're, you're watching all this in front of you and you're able to capture it and you're confident that it's being captured sharp. I mean, it doesn't get better. Mm -hmm. Can we bring that last picture of uh, Will jumping up? Now this is a very intentional shot. This is where we talk about the strobe, shooting maybe one frame at a time. This is what your vision is. Talk to us about how you set this up. <laughs> well, you, you used um, the word genius uh, relative to me, which is ill-advised, because this is, this is um, being dumbstruck, basically, because I was actually setting up in the other direction, and I looked at the sunset, and I was like, maybe I should shoot this way, you know? And we quickly, the flash is being handheld, and we just quickly segued. And I had no time to adjust anything. I mean, the sun is dropping like a stone. And again, he's profiled to me in darkness, and the AF is on the eye. Yeah, incredible. It's, it, it, it's hard to describe, and of course I used the word magic before, but Mark, you know, a lot of engineering goes into this, and you mentioned deep learning before and how important that is, and I think that you put all that together with some of the best engineers on the planet, and, and this is what you come up with. And uh, to me, anything that makes our lives easier so we can continue to try different creative things is, is the most amazing. So, Joe. Mm. Joe gets an idea. Fastest car, lots of color, flames, smoke, sun. Okay. How do all those things come together? What were some of the challenges when you were trying to do this? Because after that first pass, I think we realized some challenges at 130 miles an hour. Yep. 
Um, talk about this aspect of the shoot. Talk about this photo. It is brilliant. Well, I've seen way too many apocalyptic movies, first of all, <laughs> let me just say. And so uh, Ed has this amazing car. We have a great relationship, super guy. He said, yeah, come on out, we'll do it. He has the ability to fire flames out of his exhaust tubes. And he also has these three steel um, shafts, basically, at the, at the back end of the car that hold his parachutes. And so we um, got rid of the parachutes and we put smoke canisters in there that are electrically wired to a steering wheel. So we're towing the car now. The camera is physically on the car. I'm hitting it with the Nikon remote switch and the camera's firing. Strobes are in the cockpit and there's a, uh, a big flash behind the car that's being pushed on a cart. And my assistants, God bless them, you know, Casey and Kyle are pushing this cart and keeping the distance relative to the car so the strobe value stays the same. And then I'm on the back of the pick out, pickup going, fire! <laughs> I felt, you know, I felt like I was in a science fiction movie. It was, it was, it was fun, like you know, it was amazing. fun. So, um, so yeah, so all of those elements, as a photographer, here's the thing. You're doing a juggle, a massive juggle in your head with all these elements. I've got fading sun. I've got exposure. I've got, you know, the flames. Uh, I'm uh, thinking about shutter speed and how fast we can go. I'm towing this car, all that sort of stuff. So that's on your head. What goes out of your head is the camera technology. I know the camera is taking care of itself. You know, it's doing its job, as Jen said. One of the finest moments to me during those times was after every little run, we'd reset, but you'd run over to the camera, you'd flip up the screen, and to hear you just get more and more excited as we went and the sun kept coming down, it's like everything started to come together as it was supposed to, you know, for that end result shot you were looking for. So. Quality. You look at the stuff in the computer. All looks great on the screen. All looks great to everybody here on, you know, in the two-dimensional form we're presenting it. What do you see, you know, when you're looking through your computer, zooming in for the very first time with this stuff? Just amazing quality. I mean, depth of, of you know, feeling, emotion, saturation, color. There's tremendous, uh, I don't know if the last picture can be brought up where there's motion in the, in the, See, on the desert floor there is being illuminated by the fire. If you notice, everything else falls off into shadow. So the camera is getting its arms around very strong highlight, flames, etc., and very deep shadow, and holding everything all through the file. Mm -hmm. Now, there are other moments where we tracked the car at the fast frame rates, where you were using 3D tracking and such. What was that experience like? Again, I never lost sight of the car. Dropped the cursor on the car, and he basically came by as he gave us a haircut <laughs> basically with his car and um, the camera never never dropped a, a test with me everything on the shoot was safe right the everything fire and on the flame shoot was, was safe. all safe absolutely everything was certified we, had, and we did it all the right we, way we had permits we had a, a pyrotechnic specialist on the set kept everything safe and uh, the result was a wonderful shoot and the beauty of all this is I'm gonna say it the genius and Joe McNally putting all these elements together even creating that movement with a car that's being towed as opposed to that 150 mile an hour car to create the shot that everybody wants to get, right? Yeah, it's kind of old school, really. Um, you know, if you shoot at a quarter of a second and towing a car at two miles an hour, it looks yeah. like it's going 100 miles an hour, mm -hmm. you know? Old so. school meets new technology. Absolutely. I mean, this camera is a beautiful combination of everything we've learned with the highest technology available. And the most amazing thing is that within this one-hour segment, we can't get to everything. But, Mark, I want to bring up a couple of points, and if you could take us a little bit further. Form factor of the battery, how important is that? Well, it uh, gave us something that uh, D6 users like you, Jen, were looking for is the longevity of the battery life. Um, so the great thing about it is is that we're using the ENEL 18 series. So people that are migrating to our mirrorless format from, say, a D6 or a D5 are going to be able to reutilize their existing batteries. We're coming out with a new battery now that's the ENEL 18D. So we're at the D version of it. Um, but we're getting the most shots that we can. The great thing about it is, without the mechanical shutter, I think it 
consumes even less power, so we can get thousands of shots far beyond the SEPA rating. <laughs> but um, uh, I mean, it's, it's, it's great for video, but it's great for stills too, because everything here is electronic. We're using a monitor, we're using a high resolution EVF. So it's consuming a lot of power, but the decision to go with a full body allows us to put a bigger battery in there, which we wouldn't get if we were going with say, uh, a Z6 or Z7 chassis um, with the same specs. The, the ability to have a bigger body gives us not only the vertical grip, bigger battery, um, better heat dissipation for when we're, you know, uh, putting the memory card through its paces. Um, but uh, overall, just good er ergonomics. I think that's what people that are using this for professionally are really demanding. They want the backlit buttons. We have that in there too. And something that Joe mentioned and just thinking about, you know, the photographers that we have on the table here is that um, people that are used to D6s are used to probably D6 resolution or D5 resolution, around 20 megapixels or so. And I think it's important because when you guys are talking about detail, rich files, color, um, you're also looking at sharpness and that a lot has to do with resolution and being 45.7 megapixels, people that are watching are probably thinking to themselves, well, you're shooting 30 frames per second or 20 frames per second at full resolution. What is that going to do to my hard drive space? Uh, the great thing about the Z9 is we've now instituted a new compression uh, algorithm that can minimize that raw file to a third of the file size. So what's great for the sports photographer if you're doing 20 frames per second in raw is that you don't get the 20, uh, you don't get the uh, 45 megapixel file size that typically comes with it. We don't even have a uh, an option here to go from 14 bit to 12 bit. We keep it's it at 14, 14 bit. bit, yes. So we keep that rich file in there and we don't even give you the option to go to raw medium or raw small. It's always going to be raw large at 14 bit, but with this new high efficiency algorithm, we can get one third of the file size, which is really important because I want people to understand that even though we are talking about speed and fast frame rates, you also get the benefit of um, not having that expanded file size if you turn on the high efficiency raw. And I, I got to tell you though, with people's fear of compression, with the raw file 14 bit, even at the high efficiency mode to get over a thousand frames, the quality of these files is as good as anything I've seen prior. And that's where it all comes together in the science and the engineering, the stuff that you can't put on a piece of paper. It comes in the visual for where we go. Now, I'm about to walk the tightrope. I'm getting on the high dive board right now because I'm going to do something here that not many people love to do and that's going to make a change. Now, you in the desert, Mr. Dirt, thank you so much, my dirty thank cameras. You, Mike. I, I, I've never been called that before. So you guys, can you come in on this? What do you see in there? What we've got now is a shutter mechanism, but it's not the shutter, right? There's no shutter in this camera. It is called the sensor shield. Mark, take us away on the sensor shield and the importance. Well, people tend to forget their body caps a lot. It seems to be a problem with photographers. <laughs> or if you so, work with Joe. Guilty. <laughs> Guilty. Guilty. Right. Well, we've always had the feedback from people, why not use the shutter as a cover for the sensor when you're uh, changing lenses? We never actually adopted that. Uh, philosophy because the physical shutter is your timing mechanism. It has to be accurate to one eight thousandth of a second. But because our sensor scan rate is so fast and we've eliminated the mechanical shutter, we've now put in a sensor shield whose only job is really to protect the sensor. And so we're not so conscious about it being nicked or anything like that because it's not a timing device anymore. The timing device is the sensor. So we put that sensor shield in there. It gives you a lot of confidence uh, changing lenses out in the field, especially the type of people that are going to get this. You know, they're taking it to these dusty places and dirty places. So it just gives a, the, the camera that much more durability, which is built to the same grades as a D6. It could even operate in colder temperatures now. So build quality is tops for this camera. Uh, this is our flagship in terms of build quality. Yeah. Well, you guys can learn so much more about the Z9. Go to NikonUSA.com to the Z9 homepage, and you can start to discover more of this camera. We've got a lot of content coming your way. Uh, parting words. I'm going to start with you, Joe. Your experience with the camera overall, can you sum that up real quick? Sure, I'll go back to what I said at the very beginning of the program, game changer. Absolute, complete game changer. Jen? Definitely, uh, I'm stealing that game changer, but uh, after every one of these shoots that I've done, it, I just come away that it's fun. And uh, freedom to have fun is, uh, is a nice addition to being a game changer. Matthew? Freedom, fun, confidence builder. This camera is everything wrapped into one. I, I share that with you. I know, Mark, you probably share the same sentiments. We can't thank you enough for spending time with us now. We still have one more hour segment to come. 
uh, with filmmakers. We've got Corey Rich, Christy Odom, Jerry Guionis, who all produced incredible films. Uh, and we're going to talk on the video side over the next hour. Um, we love the fact that you're here. We want to see your pictures. We think this is a camera not just for professionals, but a lot of enthusiasts and people who love high-end performance are going to enjoy the Z9. There's so much more technology to talk about. Um, but uh, again, there's a lot of content that uh, you can go see on the website, BTS videos that were created on some of the shoots, and certainly all of this great end result. We thank you for spending this time with us. Thank you guys uh, for being uh, on the panel you. and sharing your insights and, for us. and your energy in all of this. I think we have so much more to come. The tough part for you guys now is you got to wait for the delivery of the camera, which is very short from now, um, before you get your hands on it again. And Mark and I get to go home with them. So it is one of the, go ahead, <laughs> it's one of the benefits. But um, thank you for spending time with us and stay tuned. We're going to come back with the next segment in video performance of the Z9.